Oh. Astrogator, someone's firing distress flares from near the hideout. Do you think it's Rahitra? Who else could it be? It sounds like you know something, sir. Actually, I don't. Well, he put out a broadcast, but Why didn't then? say a word about you, as if nothing had happened. Astrogator, firstly, please keep me informed of such things. Second, it happens again. He started a new cycle. Please be more clear. He fell asleep and forgot what happened the whole day. And once again, he will wake up on the 26th day of the mission. I almost feel sorry for him. Don't joke about it. If I don't snap him out of this cycle, I'll keep repeating it until he dies. Or goes insane. Of course, I feel the tragedy of this man. You want to rescue him, even though he's still a threat. You don't have to save him. We're going to save him. See the hill. I'll be there in a minute. Please slow down. Remember, he has a gun. He didn't shoot at you the first time. Doesn't work. Go in now. He won't this time as well. In any case, let's not worry in advance. I haven't located him yet. What about all those machines on the hill? Is there anything there he could use to threaten you? Your reaction to your late night visit? Well, let's see. Given you're bringing him such devastating news, you might overreact. Rohitra, you and me are the last ones. erase me from this planet if he wanted to. I know it's at stake. I can handle it. in this. I know you. I'll tell you everything. Just shut up for a moment and listen. I will not. For Hitra, for fuck's sake. Do it for Spluskas and Lendl. Oh, you think it's a 26th day of the mission. Just after the attack on your base that left many of you in critical condition. But the truth is much worse. Milos left a long time ago. What? How, how do you... You fell victim to that attack as well. The microbot cloud has wiped all traces of your comrades' memories. Your long-term memory is probably fine. That is, up until the moment you found them. You keep forgetting everything that comes after. I have reason to believe it happens during sleep. As a result, you relive the same day over and over, waiting for backup that will never arrive. The micro what cloud? That's bullshit. I don't know what you're trying to achieve, but... Focus, Rehitra. We've already met once. We spoke in your hideout. You've had me at gunpoint already. Tell me, where did you wake up today? On the mattress where you usually sleep? 
or on the floor next to the radio. What does that have to do with anything? You see, we talked for a long time yesterday, and we fell asleep while we were sitting. The water bottle you gave me is still by the crate. Did you put it there last night? Don't mess with my head. Milos, Milos is dead. They're all dead. They've been lying nearby for hundreds <clears throat> of days. You were supposed to go and check why contact was lost. You were supposed to leave tomorrow. But tomorrow never comes. Stop it! <clears throat> I know that it's hard for you to believe. I I'm not against you. I came back to help you. No, I'm warning you. I'll use my gun. Rahitra. Your gun doesn't work. You won't shoot me. It's broken. Yeah, we have a friend. Fuck! How long? How long have I been here? The fuck you getting there? Four hundred and twenty-eight days. At least. That's how many times you've broadcast your morning message to Milos. This, this, this cloud? A result of the evolution of inorganic beings. It, it attacks the most important parts of biological organisms. Our brains. It responds <clears throat> to radio waves. That's how it found our crew. right this is how it damages our brains our robots and and all machinery hey to interrupt but we have a problem the cloud is coming right oh, now. Shit. yes it's closing in on you get inside get inside what's going on who are you talking to this is a topic for another time the cloud will be here soon quick Lead to the hideout. Now, move. Can he get through the force field? Hey, hey, what are you trying to do? I'm done waiting. There's no need to anymore. There's no one left to look for. All that's left is revenge. Astrogator, I think he wants to fight. What a fool! Can't you stop him somehow? Of course, for both of you. I don't think so. He's already opened the field. I'm uh, whatever you know already we have a friend what's this you familiar with the energy transformation of Dirac emitters uh, uh... thought so here take it you can help by shooting I'll take care of maintaining the force field Oh shit. Fire. Oh shoot. Hi. Why are we not shooting? Later. 
They're all over. They're all over, man. I don't know if I'm doing this right. Oh shit, he has a saucer. What are you gonna do? We'll send the Cyclops out to fight. Cyclops? That's a code name for it's more of a moniker. For an 80 ton machine gun. Get them power exceeding all antimates combined. We usually use it in conditions of high radiation, contamination, enormous pressures, and temperatures. Due to the interference of the force field, it floats several feet above the ground. So it doesn't depend on the surface. In addition to the Dirac force field, it has an antimatter spherical blaster. Well, I hope you're right. Because I've heard about your power more than once. I and all I see is one defeat after another. In this case, Yasta, it's not just empty boasting. Sending the Cyclops somewhere is... is like giving the task to the devil himself. Well, how are you? Simple choice, Yasta. Are you going or not? Yes. Go where there could be water, medicine, resources, or stay here to die. Wow, such a hard choice. Well, how do I get up? There we go. Regret it. We're leaving. Too bad you 
did mention earlier that you had a working saucer. But we could fly to Condor right away. Or even into orbit. Working is a big word. It's just a tin can with a couple of sputtering engines. Oh, gosh. Controlling it technically doesn't work. Somehow it does not surprise me. Let's fly. Just a minute. I'm waiting for the force field to shut down, which should be soon. <clears throat> This is good news. Uh, uh, hold on, was it? This is bad news. Uh, he's not here. Rietra, he took his men to the ship. They're inside now. You had rather a hard landing. How do you know all this? Well, I heard him talking to them. To you. Uh, didn't he notice I wasn't responding? Yes, he did. He said he'd be back. If he expected me to wait here, he's sorely mistaken. Holy shit. Wow. It's impressive. The Condor? Yes. Uh, it looked majestic in the pictures. In real life, too. I think I know where a hitcher is. It's to be expected that we'll lose communications as soon as you enter the cargo bay. Sure thing. So many tons of steel. Indeed. They'll have to establish a connection using one of the devices on the ship. I'm sure you'll find one in the... Huh. So that's their marvel of military technology. We're hit your waste no time. Is it attacking already? For now, he's only released the Cyclops, as they call it. The hell is he thinking? <laughs> it's floating majestically, three meters above the ground. Ah, what does it look like? I must admit that I haven't seen any pictures of the Cyclops. The Alliance tried to keep its existence a secret. It's big, bigger than a transporter. Its launchers are hidden for now. But for some reason, it gives off such an unsettling impression. Does it make any sounds? Uh, no. It's big and quiet. Uh, well, there's one more thing, Yasta. This is important. I'll be able to confirm it in a while. But so far, everything indicates... What is it, Astrogator? Headquarters were right about the Invincible. It's actually flying here. If I'm reading the message correctly, I'll be here in a few days. I'm looking for the missing Condor. And they have no idea of the danger. Everything makes sense now. They were coming to rescue their people from the very beginning. Not to gain some imaginary advantage over us. One doesn't exclude the other, but yes. Turns out it's mostly about the Condor. He has entered one of the most powerful space units of the Alliance. Damn. This thing's huge. He came after all. 
in vain. The elevator won't start without a card. I can't give you mine, so... Hey, are you sure you can't help me somehow? What are you muttering? I can't hear you clearly. <laughs> Rahitra, come on, don't be silly! Over and out. Rahitra! Oh. I need to find a card. One of these guys gotta have a card, no? These are huge. Dang. They've got so many weapons. It's insane. Do you have a card? Oh! He left his card in here. like it or not. We're going up. Ugh. Okay, not quite at the bridge yet, but I'm getting closer, <coughs> much closer, Rahitra. Must be the medical wing. Surprisingly, everything's still running. Was Rahitra here? He had to be for his people. Oh, dude.
Oh, Coming up. Oh, bollocks. What is with all these security measures? Rahitra? How did you get to the upper deck? The usual way. With a little help from an industrial lift. A lift? Usually we use access cards. I have a card, but now... It doesn't work. Uh, not everyone had access to the bridge. Next time... Rob someone of higher rank. Over now. What an asshole. Come on, Rahitra. We go for about 20 more minutes and then we'll have to call it. Do you have higher rank? What about you guys? Got it. Ah, bingo. This one should do the trick. I just hope I can make it before a hitter attacks with that bloody cyclops. If he hasn't already. Here we go. So, you made it. <clears throat> Quicker than I thought. Let me invite you to the bridge, I suppose. Were you deliberately trying to slow me down? <clears throat> I didn't design these elevators, if that's what you're asking. No, that's not it. You can clearly control them, but... <sighs> Never mind. Dear Ackfield, ready to activate. Spherical thrower. 
Anti-protein. Oh, you came after all. Now that you're here, why don't you help me? With what? With the probes. They're over the battlefield. I do have visuals from the Cyclops here, but I can't do everything on my own. Oh, wait. Activity's increasing. They're coming. Are you helping or not? Come on, Yasna. It's about to start. Uh, all right. Have it your way. <coughs> Let's destroy them. Okay, I'm ready. Let's get it. What am I looking at? It'll be... Uh, number five, a long-range one. It sees the entire perimeter. Better switch to a closer one. There's the Cyclops. Great. Force field activation. I confirm. Field active. The clouds within reach. I'm shooting. The close range is dead. No wonder. It's boiling over there. Oh my gosh. The field is shrinking. Calm down, Yasna. It will hold. It won't hold. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, 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 beautiful. It's not a machine, it's the devil himself. I'm telling you. That's incredible. <clears throat> uh oh. Shit. I'm losing connection. Do you see anything? They're creating a tight formation. A cyclone. Fucking shit. That can't be a good, right? You tell me. Can't you see anything? The mid range is dead. How about the long range? Uh, the long range works. The cloud has stopped attacking. The Cyclops is. Huh? Uh. What is it doing? What did you see? Yasna. The cloud won. What? You said... Don't count on the Cyclops anymore. <clears throat> the circuits must have gone haywire. It shot down the probes. Now it's probably operating with a new goal. Like all those machines earlier. I, d I don't understand. How? This is pure madness. Hey, at least we still have the Invincible. Don't mock me. I'm not mocking you, Rahitra. They really are flying here. They'll be here in about... Just... Hold on for a moment. I'll find out. We gotta use the radio station... ...to contact Novak. Novik. This is the commander of the IC Dragonfly unit, Astrogator Novik. Astrogator, this is Yasna. I managed to get to the Condor's bridge, where Hitra and I led the attack on the cloud. But the Cyclops... You failed? Worse. The Cyclops got out of control and knocked down the probes. I had a feeling it would end like this. Do you know what Rehitra is planning now? I have no idea. But then I need to talk to him. You, sir? Yes. Can you switch me somehow? Okay, okay. I'm switching you to the bridge. He should be able to hear you now. Done. Please talk. Hello, Comrade. Uh, what was that? <laughs> this is Astrogator Novik, commander of the IC Dragonfly ship. I repeat. 
This is Astrogator Novik to the crew of the USCA Condor Cruiser. Please come in. <laughs> Could you stop with all these? Rohitra, Engineer Rohitra. Among our crew, I'm the last man standing, so to speak, which I guess makes me commander. <laughs> Who would have thought? In that case, I'm making an official request to join our forces to prevent the danger that threatens both sides. Oh, enough, Novik. That's enough. I agree, officially and all that jazz. We're already taking steps to eliminate the threat. I'd even say that your crew is working on it pretty damn actively. We stopped playing defense and took the fight to them. The Cloud suffered significant losses as a counterattack by them, and it disrupted our communications. <laughs> playing defense sounds a lot better than we're getting our asses kicked. Doctor, not now, please. No, it's true. Fighting against the Cloud is exceptionally difficult. But any opponent can be defeated. All it takes is the right tool. Meaning what exactly? Let me remind you that we're dealing with a dispersed entity whose technological prowess is still unknown. And it has so far destabilized every machine sent its way. Even the most specialized ones. That's why I'll keep it simple this time. No electro brains, no memory, only pure energy. You still haven't answered me, Litra. Please. Just tell me straight. Nuclear weapon! I'm arming the charges. Arming what? Explosives? Cluster munitions? Hydrogen. What? Rehitra? Are you serious? Damn right. I won't leave all this unresolved. How many warheads do you have? 54. What? From 30 kilos to 100 megatons. Oh. That's quite an arsenal. Over the top, I'd say. We really do have enough power. That's an understatement, Doctor. <laughs> an amount of energy could rip the planet to pieces. I'm not an idiot. I won't send everything at once. I'm preparing eight smaller warheads to start with. And then? We'll see. Are you sure this is a good idea, Rehitra? <sighs> Listen, yes. Soup can, Sam! A hot headed guy from the Alliance. Wants to use nukes, but put yourself in my shoes. How you doing? Two dozen hours tops of complete situational awareness. I'm taking action here and now based on my best judgment. I don't know what will happen later. Where will I wake up? In what condition? So I'm going to avenge my people before that happens and ensure the safety of those who survived. They all deserve better than this. I know you understand. I do. You would do anything for your crew. Revenge or not, the cloud threatens humanity. I understand, yes. Although it's hard to talk about revenge here. We are dealing with creations of necro-evolution. Dead evolution. And probably non-sentient ones. Taking revenge on the cloud is like... Whipping the ocean for sinking the ship? Exactly. Like Xerxes. <clears throat> it's a busy I'm day at work and join just a few minutes before the end of my lunch break. Well, I appreciate you stopping Not by. Vengeance. After all, nothing guarantees the flies will stay on Regis 3 if they continue to evolve. Wait a minute, Doctor. Even if they were to master space navigation, wouldn't it take hundreds of thousands of years? Millions of years. Even considering the evolutionary timeline, however, they could fit <clears throat> in humanity much sooner by sheer chance. Not a chance I'm willing to take. It's not over the net. If we factor in sheer chance, we might as well get killed by a meteor. No, Novik, it's not a meteor or an ocean or a storm. They don't hunt or degrade or cripple you mentally. You and Hitra are still reasoning as though we were standing face to face with a thinking opponent. What if these beings are not our enemy at all? Oh, good one. Are you forgetting how many of us they've already killed? I will never forget for Hitra. So I can't help feeling that they operate without any strategic plan. They attack from one incident to another. They're non-sentient, as the doctor put it. So what, they're stupid? And that's why they can't be hostile? It's absolute nonsense. Well, it could be. Yes, sir. What do you think?
They're not stupid or hostile, but rather programmed to react to <clears throat> radio waves, to brain waves. How? They're breaking down communications <clears throat> to thwart the exchange of information. So, they see no difference between a man and a machine? They take our brains for transmitters. That's why they're attacking? Makes sense. Exactly. Wait, what species are you talking about? Dr. Yasin found various traces of conflict, lasting for hundreds of thousands of generations. Well, they certainly competed with the local fauna. We've seen fish that evolved to sense electromagnetic fields. And underground, I found fossils of lizard-like reptiles. Some of them must have been predatory. I find it hard to believe that any prehistoric reptiles would possess our level of technology, not to mention in our stuff. But they wouldn't have. But there were other machines here as well. Other machines? I don't buy it. It's like some robot fables. No, Rachel, these are no fables. We have gathered evidence for it. <sighs> How did these machines even get here? Who built them? Probably some alien race, highly evolved. It all adds up if we assume they crashed on Regis III. But not even a single living organism survived the accident. Only machines were left. And then what? They started bashing at each other's tin heads? Doesn't make much sense to me. Machines don't have emotion. They don't... argue. First things first. Millions of years ago, some highly advanced race sent machines to Regis III. And these were specialized homeostatic mechanisms, left with no one to command them. As an engineer, you know well how it is. A robot does what it needs to do, whether it serves someone or not. At first, they probably just repaired themselves or built a home for their dead masters. Until something forced them to change. Exactly. Certain types of predator eat anything that moves. So I'm betting they were attacked by a local fauna. The key was that these machines had the ability to produce others as needed. To combat, say, flying reptiles, they started producing flying machines. That still doesn't explain why they started fighting among themselves. Since they already defeated the living organisms, why keep producing themselves? It makes no sense. That's how evolution works. What is the guiding principle of a homeostat? To survive. Apparently the machines pose a threat to one another. They use the same source of energy to function. A common, finite resource. Okay, but why did some flies survive this? Not something bigger, better. The way I see it, they were better. The best. In necroevolution, the bots that used up the fewest resources won. So they miniaturized. They look like they're getting closer. Sedentary. The former process gave rise to the cloud. The latter started this bizarre genre of, of metal structures resembling vegetation, which formed the city. And they're still growing? No. They lost the fight for survival, and now they're just rusting remnants. Only one form survived. The flying microbots that conquered all land areas on Regis Three. So these flies were just the best adapted? To the conditions of this planet? Yes, that's how it works. So, to summarize, some alien race sent advanced robots to Regis Three. Local dinosaur-like monsters tried to eat them. So the robots produced other robots, which produced more and more robots, until they fell victim to their own overproduction. After a number of iterations and wars for resources, they spat out the murderous cloud, which took over the planet. Indeed. To put it simply... For me, the matter is perfectly clear. It makes no sense to bomb these creatures. It's a greater danger to us than to them. But how else do you imagine defeating the cloud? Well, that's the thing. I don't. It's invincible. They're the invincible. Yes, sir. Do you agree? Well. Ah, oh, shit. I don't know what to do.
Um, do we attack or do we not attack? I don't know. A? Alright. There's a chance of success, but it's small? Or you mean A as in like the first one? Chance of success? Alright. Soup Can Sam says chance of success. Let's do it. If this is gonna work, the attack must be all out. What are you saying, Doctor? After a sufficiently powerful explosion, the ocean waters will begin to vaporize. Cloud cover will increase. The albedo will rise. And the resident symbionts won't be able to provide the minimum energy needed for reproduction. Ooh. So yes. We can destroy the cloud. Ha! I knew it. Along with ourselves. Oh, shit. Oh. You don't think we can defeat them and survive? Technically, we'd have to wipe out the entire planet. Oh, no. That's not our goal here, is it? No, it's not. So, you think there's no point trying with smaller charges? <clears throat> <clears throat> it won't hurt to try. Ah. Uh... I think it would though. I think if we if we use smaller charges, these things are gonna get upset. These things are gonna get mad. To survive, yeah. To survive, we shouldn't attack. We would risk our lives for nothing. So yeah, I am against bombing. We won't help anyone this way. <sighs> but what else could we do? If not, attack. <clears throat> we evacuate from here. We get to flip we out. this place and never come back. How so? Your commander will swoop down from orbit and pick us up? Or do you have an extra ship up your sleeve? Afraid none of these. Oh, no. I was thinking about a saucer or some other vehicle from the Condor. Don't count on it, Yasna. It's a miracle <clears throat> we arrived on that wreck of a saucer. Nothing else flies around here, I checked. Let's drop it, all right? Further discussion is pointless. The charges are almost ready. Rahit, for the fuck's sake, be reasonable. Oh my gosh. You won't stand <clears throat> down, will you? An escalatory solution won't work. We'll only needlessly draw the cloud's attention. And I won't have you endanger my subordinates. Stop. But doctor. No, Astrogator. I've had enough of this argument. You can't always get your way. Do what you think is right, Rahitra. No! I agree with Novik. We can't... How long will it take you? Just a moment. This is it. Pay for all this. We're blowing... It's not a conscious entity. It's dead. You're wrong, Yasta. It's about to be dead. He's gonna blow the whole planet. We're done. We're done, Yin Rings. Oh, shit. Godspeed. Watch your eyes. He fucking did it. Anything changed. What? Is this a joke? They're going up. And, and nothing can. It's unbelievable. They really are invincible. They're the invincible. Uh, this can't be happening. Doctor, I don't understand. Why? The They're rising. Should they flying this way? What the hell has he done? He's Completing fucked us. Evacuate now. Well. Join you later. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, it's about to get dark. Oh. Oh. Goodbye. My food just arrived. I will leave you with the credits. And I'll be right back after I get my food. Is there a win scenario to this game? I'd assume so. The game is a choices matter game, so I assume there would have been choices that would have gotten us off the planet. I did not... I did not choose wisely. I don't know what would have gotten us off the planet. I'm trying to think of other options. <clears throat> I'd have to do some research to find out what, uh, what would have gotten us off that planet? So this is everything that we have played through. Oh my gosh.
It's insane. That was a really good game, though. I really enjoyed that. <clears throat> that was really good.